As you see, we're very organized around here. <laughs> we just like to come to church and have a good time in the Lord with one another and just feel at home. I hope you feel at home today. Do you feel at home? I'll raise your hand if you feel at home. Is there anybody out there? Let's see. <laughs> you poor little thing. <laughs> Somebody go give him a hug. All right. Father, I thank you this morning for the love of God. I thank you for what great things you have done already. Hallelujah. Thank you for the bread from heaven. Feed us, Jesus. Give us what we need today. Give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. All right. You may be seated. Let me, let me talk to you for a minute here. Jerusalem, the very center, the very heart of the Jews, the very heart of life. Everything is centered around Jerusalem. All that they knew, all that they learned all that they lived for, all that they were mentally aware of, night and day, the center of each and every heart. But God poured out His Spirit in Jerusalem. And as Peter stood speaking to the people at what had happened, as the people listened to them speaking in other languages, some saying, mocking, saying they're drunk on new wine. Peter stood up and said, no, this is not what you think. This is what the prophet said would happen. This is that. So Peter began to exhort them over and over. Jesus, whom you have crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ. Death could not hold him. It was impossible for him to be held. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father and has bestowed this upon us today. The Bible says that the people after hearing Peter's exhortation by the Holy Spirit you see when the Holy Spirit is speaking to a man or a woman, person. It does something. It penetrates yes, the hearts and minds of those who are listening. Yes. The Holy Spirit does what no human voice, a human heart can do. A 
of all that they knew and all that they treasured in Jerusalem as being Jews. Knowing the true God, having the law, having the prophets, having all that they had in their, in, in their understanding of worship, sacrifice, praying to the true and living God. It matters not. For when the Holy Spirit speaks, it awakens. It makes alive. It causes men to see, to begin to understand that there is something that they're missing. And I just like God. He comes to the world and shows them, regardless of their religious belief, regardless of their religious stand or position, no matter how well learned they even may be, after all, they've been coming to Jerusalem for hundreds of years. This is the center of worship. This is the center of, this is where God dwells. But the Holy Spirit is come. And He is making men to realize there is something you are missing. For when Peter preached, the people asked him, Men, brethren, what shall we do? Now, what a question. For the learned Jewish man to ask. You have the law. You have the prophets. You have the knowledge. You have the advantage over everybody else. You have the learned rabbis and the teachers of the law. Scribes, Pharisees. You have been taught all of your life. You who claim to be the light of the world are asking, what shall we do? Do you ever meet anybody who Thought they knew everything. And they are very, very smart people in the world. But regardless of your station in life, wherever you are in life, it doesn't matter with God. Whether you're very learned or very ignorant. The Holy Spirit... makes alive something in you. He, he, he does a work in your mind and heart. He does something to stir you to a point you had no idea. When you thought that you knew everything there was to know, the Holy Spirit causes you to realize you don't know. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. What 
must we do? We've done everything that we know to do. We're here. We're in the temple. We worship God. We've done what our fathers and forefathers and their fathers and their fathers' fathers have always done. We know who we are. And we know what we believe. We are sure that Jehovah is the true living God. This temple was built to house the presence of God. And we've come here every day, every week, every month, every year throughout the year to meet with Him. But what you're saying to us tells us we've missed something. Do you ever go to church sometime and you sit there through the, through the service and you feel the same way? Man, we're missing something here. We've got everything in the world you could possibly want in a church, but we're missing something. <laughs> and that's the Holy Spirit telling you. The day is here. Jesus said when they were neither at Jerusalem nor on this mountain. Worship the Father. For God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit. And in truth. Hallelujah. Does God know how to deal with each and every one of us? Does he know how to talk to each and every one of us? Does he know, does he know how we think? I, I, I believe he does. I, I believe he knows. I believe he knows exactly where you are on the scale. One to ten. <laughs> he knows where you are. And the Holy Spirit comes to convict us and to convince us. And when He does His work, when He has pricked the heart, Paul was on the road to Damascus when he met Jesus. Yes. You remember? I'll preach about Paul all around here. Sure is going to be good to see him in heaven. Yes. When he met the Lord on the road to Damascus, Jesus asked him a question. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Why do you persecute me? Why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick 
against the pricks. You know what that is. Well, let me explain it. If you take a long stick, a long rod, and you prod the animal to move forward, and he'll kick against that. He don't like, he don't like to be pricked. But you prick him to move him forward like a stubborn mule. People in Arkansas ought to understand that, stubborn <laughs> mule. You see, a stubborn animal doesn't like to be prodded, pricked, forced to do something. He bucks up against it. But the Bible tells us when Peter was through preaching that they were pricked. Book of Acts chapter 2. They were pricked in their hearts. They were convicted and they were convinced. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! They didn't threaten Peter. They didn't run off and run away. They didn't become angry and grab a hold of him and throw him out of the temple. Thank God. But the Holy Spirit speaking through Peter penetrated their heart. Oh, what happens in the world when people say, what must I do? Oh, it is because you have been convinced that you need Jesus. Amen. You have been convinced that the truth is the truth about Jesus and you're willing to admit that and say, Lord, what do you want me to do about it? You know, what gets me about a lot of people that claim to be Christians, but let me ask you this question. When the Lord wants to do something and God is telling you something, are you listening to Him? When the Holy Spirit is moving in you, and you know it's Him. Yes. Now remember when the Pharisees and scribes and all them people heard Jesus preach, the Bible says that instead of asking the question, what must we do? They said, that's enough of this. We got to get rid of this fella. <laughs> Jesus kept preaching and they said, you are doing what you're doing by the, by the devil. By the prince of devils. You're performing all of these miracles by Beelzebub. What did Jesus tell them? All manner of sin that men commit shall be forgiven. But any man who speaks against the Holy Spirit hath never forgiveness. But he's in danger of hellfire. What does that mean? That means when a man is hardened his heart against the pricking of the Spirit of God, if he refuses and hardens his heart against it, he can't be saved because there's no other way. There's no other way to come to God unless the Spirit of God draws you. No man can come to Christ except the Spirit of His Father 
draws him. If you buck up against that, how can you be saved? It's impossible. You can't be forgiven any other way. There's only one way. There's only one way to experience a true and real relationship with God. And God is calling everyone out of their place in life. Whatever your station in life is, whoever you are and whatever you believe, it doesn't matter. When God is calling you, when the Holy Spirit is drawing you and convicting you and convincing you, He's reproving you. The Bible says that Jesus taught his disciples, when the Holy Spirit comes, whom I will, whom the Father will send, Amen. let me just read this. Jesus said He's the Comforter, and if I don't go away, He won't come. First of all, Jesus said, it is expedient for you. It is to your advantage. It is to your advantage that I leave. Now to have Jesus around, I mean, He was their shield, their shelter, their defense. When they was with Jesus everywhere they went, I mean, if you're going to follow Jesus, you got the world against you. If you're with Jesus, you're going to have a lot of people upset with you. If you follow Jesus, you're not going to fit in. You're going to be counted as an outcast. And they knew it. And the more they followed Jesus, the more they knew it. And the more they realized that they were, you know, that people, I mean, a lot of people just didn't like them because they were with Jesus. And they also realized that wherever they went, a lot of people had a lot of questions to ask them. And they didn't know how to answer it, but they could always rely on Jesus to give an answer. Yes. Oh, we don't know. That's the Master. Well, I don't know. That's Jesus. <laughs> well, will you please heal me or pray for my son or cast the devil out of this prayer or whatever? And when they tried to do it, it didn't happen. They said, well, where's Jesus at? Let's find Jesus. <laughs> he can do it. So they became heavily dependent upon Jesus. He became their champion. The one upon whom they leaned and uh, confided in and trusted in. And, you know, uh, if he wasn't there, they kind of felt naked. Exposed. But as long as Jesus was with them, they were there, everything was all right. They have, they have, you know, they have comfort, they have, they have confidence, they, you know, well, we'll follow him. And if Jesus said something, and you know, and so, something was said in the sermon, and, and, and people listening stood around, giving them, giving them a bad eye, giving them a bad look, they'd say, "Well, don't look at me. Look at him. He's the one who said it." <laughs> <laughs> and so, to have Jesus around. You know, gave them feeling of assurance. And everything's going to be all right. But Jesus said, I'm going to leave. I'm leaving you. I just want you to know. 
I'm going away. Uh -oh. What? <laughs> Their eyes bugged, bugged up. Are you going away? Bugged your eyes out. What did you say? <laughs> You're going away? Where are you going? <laughs> if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. So it is expedient. It is to your advantage yes, it is. for me to go. So that when he comes, he's with you now, but in that day he shall be in you. And he shall abide with you forever and ever. And he will testify of me, and what he hears is what he says. And he will encourage you and empower you. Yes. And when you open your mouth and speak, he will be there to give you the words to say Amen. in power and in strength. Paul says, I come not to you in words. But in power yes. and demonstration of the Spirit. Yes. There's a difference when the Spirit is speaking and when man is speaking. There's a difference when the Spirit is working and man is trying to, trying to make something work. You can go to the temple every day and try to make it work. But brother, it don't work when the Holy Spirit starts working. Amen. You can go to church every Sunday and try to make it work. But when the Holy Spirit is there and He begins to work. Oh, yes. And something's accomplished. When the Holy Spirit is there to convince us. To convict us and convince us. To reprove us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Does he reprove the saints? I believe he does. Yes, amen. He's always keeping us up to par. He's always keeping us in line. Amen. He's always there to remind us of the truth of everything. He's always there to make us always think in the right, the right direction. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 He's always there to give the word. And sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a, a profound word and sometimes it's very simple. Amen. But whatever it is, it's good. Yes. Whatever the Holy Spirit does in you is a good thing. You may feel like you're being kind of up, being upset a little bit. You know, you're kind of like somebody's trying to move you out of your seat, but that's okay. It's a good thing when the Holy Spirit is moving in you. It's a good thing when the Lord pries us up out of our rut. And it's a good thing when the Lord empties us out of things that don't need to be there so He can fill us up. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. The grass withers and the flower falls away because the Spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Those people at Jerusalem felt withered. <laughs> they thought they were blooming in glory, gloriously blooming and shining. The Holy Spirit comes on, <sighs> and they just withered away.
There are too many people who are lifted up that needs to be humbled down. There are too many people that are full of stuff they don't need that need to be emptied out so that they can be filled with the good things of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said when the Holy Spirit comes, He will reprove. He said, if I, if, when I, he said, I will go away and the Comforter will not come unto you until I do. If I depart, I will send Him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Yes. Right. And of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe on me. The greatest atrocity that a man can commit is to call God a liar. These Jews could have said, well, we're not, we're moral people. We're not thieves and liars and adulterers and, 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 and uh, drunkards and the worst of men. We believe in God. Yes. We believe in the law. We believe in what's right. But if you don't believe on Jesus, then you're calling God a liar. Can you think of anything worse? Hallelujah. He will reprove the world of sin because they do not believe on me. Are we convinced the Holy Spirit has spoken over and over again. The Word of God has been preached time and time again. God has demonstrated His power and His love over and over again. The Lord does not leave Himself without a witness he has proven himself over and over again. Amen. Look at Jesus of Nazareth and all that he did. And all that happened throughout his ministry in Israel of all the things that he did and said. And the people did not believe on him. Every prophecy in the scriptures is fulfilled. Everything said about Jesus that the Jews were looking for the Messiah to come. Everything was fulfilled in Him. There wasn't anything left out He fulfilled at all. He, no one else could have possibly done what Jesus did. And what happened is exactly what the Bible said would happen. Concerning His Judgment, his, crucif his crucifixion, and his death and burial and resurrection, everything that happened. Of all that Jesus did and said. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will attest to that. He will testify to that to the world. And when it hits home, when the Holy Spirit, and I say, a, a preacher can get up and preach from the Bible all day long. 
and and it not and it just it just it bounces off. It just goes through one ear and out the other. You can preach all day long, people just hum hum hum. Will he ever get done? <laughs> there have been a few around here, you know. <laughs> but look at Peter. Look what happened. when they saw the demonstration of the Holy Spirit in those disciples. And they heard that word about Jesus. So strong, powerful. When they knew there must be something to what this fisherman is saying. Because after all, he wouldn't be doing this if something hadn't happened. So if this wasn't right, he wouldn't be here in the temple talking like this. Yay, hallelujah. Somebody looks at your life and says, something must have happened to her because she's not acting like herself anymore. Something must have happened to him because I know him and he just don't do things like that. So when the Holy Spirit was through using Peter, and he did over and over again, reading the book of Acts, read it, read it over again. Time and time again it says, and being filled with the Holy Spirit, they stood up and said something. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, they stood up and said something. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, they stood up and said, hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit is filling you to overflowing and you're speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. Man, that's power. That's something going out there that cannot be denied. The scribes couldn't preach that way. The Pharisees couldn't preach that way. The rabbis in the temple every day, uh, every week or in the synagogues didn't preach that way. So when the Holy Spirit began to move, what happens? Of all that you've known and all that you've learned and all that you've thought and all that you have, suddenly becomes a blank, becomes a blur. It's something you put behind you and you say, what must I do? I never thought I would ask that question, but what is it that I got to do, man? What is it? When the Lord gets a hold of you, you're going to be the same way. <laughs> is this okay? The Holy Spirit come to reprove. That word reprove there, to convict, not necessarily does it mean at first to save, but to silence. Not necessarily at the beginning to save you, but to silence you. And brother, he knows how to do that. When I don't know how to shut you up, God does. When nobody else can tell you you're wrong, the Holy Spirit can show you you're wrong. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I, you know, I'm not up here to try to convince you. I'll leave that to the Holy Spirit. He will convince you of the truth. All I have to do is say what God gives me to say, and the Holy Spirit will confirm that word in you. And instead of you saying something ugly... 
He will silence your tongue. And, or instead of you, maybe you're not going to be ugly, but maybe you're going to be... Traditional. We're all that way. Well, now I never, I never heard it that way before, and that's not, that's just not how I see it. Okay. We're all that way. That's just not how my mama taught me. That's not how my father taught me to do. <laughs> and I'm not getting on to you. We're all, we're all that way. But the wonderful thing is the Holy Spirit silences that. Instead of you saying that, you know, because that's what you've said every time. Every time somebody knocked on your door, that's the first thing you said. Well, we just don't believe that way. <laughs> But when He does a work in you, when He, when the Holy Spirit is, has reached you, suddenly you start to open your mouth and say what you all normally say, and you're not saying that anymore. Something dawns on you. A light bulb comes on. Something wondrous begins to take place. And you begin to realize your need for God. And you begin to realize your own sinfulness and depravity. You begin to realize I am You begin to think, I didn't really know that. Because the Holy Spirit is working in opening our eyes and opening our mind and opening our hearts to the Lord. That's all it is. It's not conforming to a certain religion. We don't want nobody conform to religion. We just want to simply say, open your heart to the Lord. Yes. That's what church is all about. That's what Christianity is all about. It's for men to open up their heart to the Lord. Humble yourself before God. Be open hearted. Be soft hearted. Don't harden against your heart against the Lord. Hear what God is saying. And when that comes across with such conviction and such assurance and so positive and so true by the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit's work, He's not some, the Holy Spirit is not some weak Sickly, bashful. Well, I'd rather not offend them. I don't want to say anything to hurt their feelings. He is very aggressive. He is very forthright. Not because he's he thinks oh, I'm really something here. I'm really you know, I'm I'm the thing. I'm it. No, it's because God loves you, and He is so desperately wants you to know the truth. He wants you to know who God really is. He wants you to see Jesus in your life. Hallelujah. And He'll come right where you are when you think you're okay. Wherever you are in life when you think everything's alright. 
He comes to rock your boat. Because your boat needs rocking. He comes to shake you up because you need to be shaken. He comes to empty you out of your own self-righteousness and pride and all the other things that is crowding in there so that He can come in and fill you to overflowing with His love. And give you a whole new concept. Give you a whole new point of view about everything. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He comes to regenerate you. Man cannot know God as God wants him to in his carnal self. The natural man, I said this last week and I said it today, the natural man can never know the things of God. He may know about God, but he doesn't really know the things that are given to us freely of God. For they are spiritually discerned. So the Holy Spirit moves upon us so to regenerate, to make us new. In other words, we're born again by the Holy Spirit. And when we're born again, we become spirit. And when we are spirit, then we begin to understand and receive the things of God. They're no longer foreign to us. Somebody says, now, Brother Bob, I don't know about that. I, uh, you know, I appreciate what you do and what you have, but I've never done that. I've never had that. I, you know, that's just not my, not my thing. I mean, I'm pretty happy where I am. <laughs> you just go do your thing and I'll go do mine. <laughs> you got what you got and I got what I got and that's just the way it is, Bob. That's just the way it is. The only reason why you say that is because you're speaking out of your carnal, natural mind. Because this Holy Spirit, this good thing of God, is for every one of us. Hallelujah. It's for everybody. It's not just what I think or what I say or what I want. It's what God wants for you. Huh? Peter said this gift is promised to you and to your children and those that are far off and near and as many as the Lord our God shall call. God says this is for everybody. So I've gotten to the point in my life where I say, Lord, whatever it is you want from me, let me have it. Whatever it is you got for me, I don't want to miss it. Whatever it is you want of me, Lord, help me. Just whatever it takes, what must I do? <laughs> Why? Because I'm touched. <laughs> I'm touched. And the same thing happens to you. If the Lord touches you, that's why you are. You're touched. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit touches us, we're going to say the same thing. Lord, what can I do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like this church here. We're doing what we do here, and we keep doing it. And I'm always saying, Lord, what is it you want us to do? What do you want? I'll just keep doing what you want. And now what do you want us to do next? Why? Because I'm touched. Everybody raise your hand and say, Lord, touch me. <laughs> Holy Spirit, move upon me. Holy Spirit had done spoken to me. There's something happened inside me. I don't know what it is, but it must be something good. I done forgot about everything else I knew before. Now the Lord began to open my eyes.
eyes. He's opening my understanding. I begin to see God is doing something in the world and I want to know what it is He wants me to do. Hallelujah. Forget about what's behind. I'm pressing on and what lies before me. Hallelujah. I'm moving on. Well, I'm moving on down. <laughs> to the east side. <laughs> I'm moving on up. <laughs> I'm moving on up. Yeah, but you, you, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to act this way. You know who you are and where you come from. What are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing, but I got to move, man. I got to go because the Lord has touched me. Praise God. I got to go because the Lord done sent me. I don't know what lies ahead. All I know is we got to go. When Jesus called his disciples to follow him, you, do you know they didn't realize where they were going, what they're going to do? They had no idea what they were going to do, where they were going to go. But when Jesus said, "Follow me," they just dropped everything and went. Well, I don't know what this fellow wants of me, but I'm going. I don't know what all is going to happen. I don't know what my mom and dad's going to think about this. What my folks are going to think about me. Or my neighbors and my friends. But I got to go. Where are you going, Peter? I don't know. He called me. But I got to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? He was touched. <laughs> That's a good title for the sermon. I'm touched. <laughs> He's going to reprove the world of sin because they didn't believe on Jesus. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. What does that mean? If He wasn't righteous... If he wasn't perfect in his way, if he wasn't just and true, he wouldn't be going back to the Father. If what he had performed wasn't acceptable, his Father wouldn't receive him. But everything that Jesus did was perfect. And he was welcomed back home. When Jesus rose again from the dead and 40 days later he ascended into heaven, the Father received him with open arms. Welcome home, son. Well done. Well done. You have accomplished all that we, that we talked about. Everything that needed to be done has been done. It's all done. It's finished. You have made the way. You have given your life selflessly and you have done all that is required everything is fulfilled not one jot or tittle not one thing has been left undone everything is perfect sit thou at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool the last enemy that is to be destroyed is death. And one day Jesus is going to put his foot on that. Hallelujah. For you and me. He's already done it for himself. The power of over life and death is in his hands. He's already done that. But one day he's going to break the, he's going to break the chain. He's going to break that power of death. You're laying in your grave. You're going to come out of that grave. You hear me? Your body's laying in that grave. It's going to come out of there. Right. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Yes. Thanks be unto God that give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory through Him. So, of righteousness, because I go to the Father and you see me no more. The Holy Spirit comes to let us know what Jesus did and what He performed was perfect. 
and acceptable to God. That all of your sins have been forgiven. That you're justified by faith in Him alone. His righteousness is yours. It's not the righteousness of the law. It's not anything you could do yourself. So don't brag or boast about what you are and what you have and what you've done and what you know. Boast in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He has done and what He has accomplished. That is your strength. That is your power. That is your faith. That is your life. Jesus Christ is your life. Hallelujah. Say amen if you believe that. The Holy Spirit comes to testify to that fact. You are justified not by the work of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. He took your sins at the cross and gave you His righteousness. Therefore, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit came to reprove the world of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Who is he that condemneth? Who is he that condemneth? Yea, it is Christ who has died that is risen again. He didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. He will reprove the world of judgment. Who has the right to make a judgment on you? Who has a right to make the decision for you? It is He who died for you. Who has a right to claim you? Who has a right to save you? Who has the right to be the Lord of your life? The same one who died for you and rose again. That settles it. There is no other judgment. That's it. That's the judgment of the Lord. Hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven for His sake. That's the right judgment. You're not forgiven because you have done something to make sure that you're forgiven. Jesus has already done that. What do I need to do? <laughs> what must I do? Is there anything I can do? I'm glad you asked the question because that tells me the Holy Spirit's working on you. What must I do? Peter said, Repent. Repent. He's talking to a bunch of church-going people. He's talking to a bunch of temple worshipers. He's talking to a bunch of people who believes in the true and living God. He is talking to people who have gone every Sabbath to the, to the temple and synagogues and worshiped the Lord and have made sacrifice. He says, Repent. Of what? I'm not a sinner. I don't run in the world. I'm at church. Repent. Repent. 
and believe yes. on the Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes. Whatever your station is in life, it doesn't matter. Whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever you believe, repent. What does that word mean? Have a change of mind. A change of mind. When you thought everything was right, the way it is, he says, God wants you to have a change of mind. Because things are not going to go the way you think they're going. It's not going to end up the way you think it's going to end up. Believe on the Lord Jesus. He said, go get baptized. And believe on Him. Make an outward confession to the world. Identify with Jesus right here. Identify with Jesus right here and right now. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Identify yourselves with the Lord. And then you begin to see what it is that God's doing. You'll begin to understand what it is that God has for you in the future in your life. It's not just this temple. You'll find a whole new world when you turn to the Lord. God knows how to upseat us real good. God knows how to change things for us real good. He knows how to, hallelujah, make us see things a whole lot different than we saw before. Isn't that right? Ain't nothing like living for the Lord because, praise God, every good thing, every good thing comes to you. Hallelujah. And we're not just talking about physical things or natural things in this world. We're talking about things of the Spirit that the world can't give you. Nobody can give it to you. Religion can't give it to you. Your traditions can't give it to you. Only Jesus can give you those things. Only the Holy Spirit can work that in your life. Do you want to be a, a person that's an overcomer? Do you want victory? Do you want to live in peace? Do you want to have joy? Do you want to have faith and love? Then the Holy Spirit is here to bring that to us and to shed it abroad. Hello. If I had a bag of seeds, I'd do it. The Bible said He sheds abroad in our hearts the love of God. Stand with me, everybody. When the Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth. And bring things to your remembrance. Can't nobody take it from you. Amen. You know where you're going. You know what God is doing in your life. And no one can tell you any different. He says, you say, I know what I was before. But I know what I am now. I know what I believed before. But now I know what I believe now. I knew what I knew then, but I didn't know what I know now. <laughs> Behold, all things become new in Christ. All things. Father, I thank You this morning. Keep us, Lord. Keep us in the truth. 
Jesus prayed that we would be sanctified in the truth. Thy word is truth. Hallelujah. Keep us, Lord, as Jesus prayed. Keep us in thy truth. Let us ever be mindful and ever, always keep us aware of the truth. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the many gifts and blessings upon us. Hallelujah. Lord, you've done spoil us. <laughs> you've already, Lord, you've already spoiled us, and there's no other place we'd rather be. When we don't have it, we long for it. Hallelujah. We just rejoice in you, Lord. The Bible tells us to rejoice always. The Apostle Paul says, evermore rejoice in the Lord. Behold what things the Lord has done. Marvelous things. Thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Does anybody need Jesus this morning? Anybody lost? If you're lost, time to get saved. Do you know the Lord? Raise your hand. Look around. Say, thank you, Lord, for saving these souls. Are you ready to go to heaven? Yes. Glory to God. I'm ready to. You're going to look around and see me over there flying up with you over here somewhere. I'm going to be going up <laughs> when the Lord comes back. Praise God. Amen. Let me just say this let you go. If the Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He shall also quicken your mortal body by His Spirit that is in you. Praise God. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you convinced? I'm convinced, Brother Phil. You convinced? I'm convinced. Ain't nobody going to tell me different. I'm convinced. Amen. Forever and always convinced. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Love one another. Shake hands and be friendly. And come back and see us again. Amen.